once again uh, welcome everyone to the uh, creator tech connect uh, series for people who have uh, joined us for the very first time let me give you a small introduction about the creator tech connect series the creator tech connect series is a month on month a free webinar that we conduct where we concentrate mainly on the technical nuances that are there in the creator platform hi i am sai kumar murlidharan i'll be uh, your uh, trainer for today and part of the zo creators training team now before we get started into the session there are a few housekeeping rules to be followed all attendees will be on mute at all times if you have any questions please post your questions in the questions tab my uh, co-trainers would be answering your questions uh, it is for a reason that we won't be missing out any questions a recording of this session will be uh, sent to all the registrants so that you can uh, revisit uh, the sessions and please participate in the polls and surveys that are being conducted on the topic of uh, the recording of the session we also have a course that uh, we have uh, started just give me a second where i just course that we have started my co trainer would be uh, sharing the link for the same um, here uh, you'll be able to go ahead and view all the recordings of the sessions that uh, we have conducted throughout the year so from january till september we have conducted uh, multiple sessions with different uh, topics that we have covered you'll be able to go ahead and view these recordings at your convenience you just need to sign up and uh, go ahead and view the recordings which is uh, free of cost now let's get into uh, today's uh, series that uh, we are conducting so this is a session which is part of a three part series that we are conducting on zo directory with zoho creator now when you have an organization you will have lot of uh, users and employees who will uh, be inside the organization who will be using uh, different applications in the organization right to maintain uh, the employee details applications the access the security policies of the organization for all this uh, you need a singular place right now that is where zoho directory comes in and it plays a huge role in uh, maintaining all the admin related activities when we have an organization with lots of application being used right now in this series uh, we have uh, segregated that into three parts in the first part of the series uh, we had covered managing users and applications in zo creator with zo directory uh, last month and then uh, in this session we have uh, domains controls and security in zo creator using zo directory in the coming month uh, we'll be uh, talking extensively about uh, the directory stores and the device authentication using zoho directory let's go get into today's topic which is domains controls and security in zoho creator using zoho directory in this session we will see in detail about uh, the domains uh, where you can access domains in zoho creator and zoho directory the controls that you can have when you are providing access to the users and what are the security policies that can be defined when you are uh, using a uh, zo creator with the help of zo directory now we'll be seeing all that in this session let's look at today's agenda first we'll have a recap of uh, the part 1 of uh, the series which happened last month and then uh, we'll uh, delve into the understanding of what are domains uh, what are the uh, controls that are available in zo directory with respect to the applications we'll talk about uh, understanding some security features in zo directory we'll also talk how you can configure these security policies where are these options available in zo directory we'll also talk how you can configure the custom authentication in zo creator as well we'll have live demonstrations and we'll also discuss about a few key pointers that you need to note uh, while uh, working with uh, domains controls and security features first let's have a small recap now in the last session uh, we had uh, talked in detail about how you can manage uh, users and applications with respect to zo creator where you can add users inside and also zoho directory we talked in depth about how uh, the sync between the two happens in real time when you have a uh, users added in zo directory how it would reflect in zo creator as well 
and we also talked about conditional assignments in Zoho directory. At the end, we discussed few key pointers that you need to note while working uh, with uh, the Zoho directory and Zoho creator with respect to users and admin admins and applications. Let's get into today's first topic, which is understanding domains and controls in Zoho creator. Now, when we talk about domains, you are uh, you'll be using this word on a regular basis, right? Let's get to know what is domain. A domain is nothing but a location where uh, in, in the uh, virtual world, you'll be able to uh, identify at the right place uh, where uh, you have a website that is situated, right? And these uh, domains can have one or more uh, registered uh, websites in that domain. And you also have uh, you, you also have an option of having several domains which can be hosted in the same IP address as well. Now, when we talk about domains in Zoho Creator, uh, it helps uh, users onboarding uh, more simpler. Now, when we talk about uh, helping user onboarding process, when you already have a verified domain existing, uh, you can go ahead and onboard users inside more efficiently. You can group users together and uh, that would help uh, in the process of uh, the onboarding of users inside. And it would also help with the email communication that happens when you have a verified domain that exists. Now to access the uh, domains, you just need to get into the manage section. Uh, and inside the manage section, you have the governance. And in the governance, uh, you have an option called as domains. When you click on domains, you can go ahead and configure the domain. Now uh, we'll get into a demonstration and let me show you where you can go ahead and access the domain. Now here, uh, ideally you will have uh, towards your left, uh, develop, deploy and manage over here, right? Now under the manage section, you have something called as governance. Now let's click on governance. And here on top, you have four tabs, security policies, custom authentication, active uh, directories and domains right now first let's start with domains i'll click on configure domain over here and when i click on configure domain it takes me directly to the zoho directories uh, application over here right now it takes me to the domains tab over here now for uh, people who are visiting uh, are viewing the zoho directory for the very first time let me give you a small introduction towards your left you have uh, the dashboard where you have all the important KPIs that are uh, required to be viewed by the admin or the super admin to know all the activities of the users and the applications that they are using. You have uh, organizations where you have all the organization details. You also have applications uh, wherein you can add applications in, inside uh, where organizations uh, will can add their applications that the users are using on a day-to-day -day basis. Then you have users, you can add multiple users inside and these uh, users uh, can be assigned applications. They can be, uh, you know, accumulated into a group and you can also assign admins as well over here. Now we have covered this in depth uh, in the last month's session. Uh, my co-trainer would be sharing the link for the same. You can go ahead and revisit uh, the topics of application users and admins and groups. Uh, again, to know more about it. Now, let me click on uh, domains. Now, in domains, uh, if you want to add a domain, you can just click on add domain over here and you need to enter the domain name. So ideally, you would have purchased a domain uh, from a third party service or a vendor like GoDaddy or Hostinger or someone, right? Now, you just need to enter the domain name over here. Like you can enter this domain name as servertest.com in and then i'll click on add over here now once i click on add it would ask me to verify the domain now depending upon where or from which third party vendor that you have purchased you just need to get into the uh, domain host and you need to get into the dns records page which will be available in the uh, third party service and you need to enter the txt records and the txt records is nothing but the uh, host name and the value that is entered and you just need to validate the records now once the validation happens uh, this domain will be verified 
another place inside creator where you can view the uh, domains that are existing are uh, in the uh, accounts in the top right corner now under the profile you have uh, my accounts right you can click on my accounts and you need to enter the password over here and towards our left uh, you can see on the bottom left corner you have organizations right you click on organizations and here you have the domains that is available now if you already have a verified uh, domain uh, you just need to go ahead and uh, uh, view it or if you have not verified it you just need to click on verify now and you have a different ways by which you can go ahead and verify by using the txt cn name or the HTML process now once it is verified uh, you can uh, view that in the option that is available under org under the operations where uh, you have uh, email management and domain authentication here uh, you can uh, view the domains that is being used now you can add up to uh, 30 domains uh, in a zoho directory depending upon uh, your organizational requirements if you are grouping different departments together like operations uh, like production and you want a domain specific to those you can go ahead and uh, do that as well or if you have different entities you can have domains purchased for different entities and add them together inside uh, the same account over here as well now this is with regards to uh, the domains now let me get back to uh, the presentation and now let's uh, see how you can control the applications that uh, you are uh, giving access to right now ideally when you are giving access to the applications to your users uh, you would have provided uh, the access to go ahead into the application and uh, use the application in multiple ways right now what if uh, you uh, the user wants to use some applications that they have not given access to right now the admin can also go ahead and control uh, the unassigned applications now when we talk about unassigned applications you might have uh, let's say 10 applications uh, in the organization and the user might be given access to only four applications right the rest of the six applications there might be cases where he or she might want to use those applications now in that case uh, they can request for an access for those applications now the admin can control how uh, they can go ahead and request for access do they even uh, be given permission to request those access or should we just deny permission for the unassigned applications all this can be controlled in the option called as controls in zoho directory now let me get back to the demonstration and here i have uh, an option called as controls now when i click on controls over here uh, you have an option to request access to unassigned zoho directory applications now when we talk about zoho directory applications you can get into applications over here and these are all the list of applications that are existing in this account right now the users who are part of this organization will be using uh, either of the applications that are listed over here right and when i click on users here you can see uh, the applications that are assigned to these users now let's say i am sai kumar murli and i have just one application that is assigned to me right now what if i want to use uh, some other application that is not assigned to me in that case i will i will enter that application and uh, then what will happen in that case you can control that in controls now the first you can allow all applications wherein any application that is there in the organization they can uh, users can go ahead and ask for access or request for access or you can deny any application that is not provided access if the user does not have access to that application they can be denied uh, the uh, access for that application they can't even raise a request you also can customize this customize this further as well uh, where i can go ahead and choose the application now there are multiple applications that are listed over here i can choose the application and i can provide uh, the access to uh, uses or I can uh, deny the access request to 
uh, the selected applications right now once i select it you have another option which pops out which says email notification will be received by either it can be organization owner it can be uh, the zo directory admin or it can also be uh, the admins that you are selecting from the drop down now you would have already assigned admins to uh, different uh, parts of uh, the work of admins for example over here with the admin uh, you have the organization owner the application admin so depending upon the admin access you can give out uh, the zo directories admin access specifically and the email notification will be sent to them and once the request is uh, being act, request is given as positive they'll be able to go ahead and access the application or else uh, the access will be denied now these uh, controls can be maintained over here now these controls are not exclusive to creator you can have any application that is listed uh, in the applications and it can be added to the allowed apps let me get back to the uh, presentation over here let's understand the security features in a zoho directory now that we have seen how uh, you can add a domain we have seen how you can uh, create uh, the controls of providing or requesting access to the unassigned applications you also can understand the so let's also understand the security features in zoho directory when we talk about the security features uh, in a zoho directory let's take zoho creator as an example now with the zoho creator application a user goes ahead and he needs to log into a zoho creator application on a regular basis right now what are the security features that you can attach to when a user is logging in you can define uh, the password policy according to uh, the requirement you can define the password policy for the organization or for the group you have the multi factor authentication which can be enabled you also have uh, the option of managing the sessions so you will have multiple sessions that the user opens up you can manage the session and also you can have the ip addresses uh, being controlled as well now these are four major security features in zoho directory which uh, can be uh, controlled and can be edited and customized now let's uh, look at it one by one first we have the password policy now with the password policy you can define how strong a password should be and how often that password should be changed right now when you are uh, using uh, you know any mailbox or when you have an application that you are using at every point of time after a period it would ask you to change the password right and when you change the password you would have experienced uh, places where it would say that i uh, you need uh, you need to add an upper upper character you need to have a special character added you need to have an upper case added as well right now these are uh, these are places where uh, in the back end the admins would have set out a uh, password policy stating how strong a user's password should be right now we'll be seeing how you can customize that as well we'll be seeing how uh, you have the multi factor authentication uh, which can be enabled where uh, it dictates how you can go ahead and log into the application you also have an option as uh, we uh, had discussed about the allowed ips now depending upon uh, the ip addresses the user is using uh, you can control if that ip address can be allowed or it can be denied then we have the session management now with the session management uh, we have uh, different actions that can happen depending upon uh, which part of the session the user is in so let's say uh, you have an idle session now if there is an idle session what kind of action should happen all those uh, actions can also be customized now let's uh, look at it one by one and let's segregate what are the options that are available in each of these uh, security policies now first we have the password policy now with the password policy you can go ahead and customize the password strength you can go ahead and also define what kind of a password complexity should be there when a user goes ahead and uh, tries to sign up for the very first time or tries to change the password and then you also have the password age at for how long should uh, the password uh, be active and when should the user change the password 
now all this can uh, be defined and you can create a different password policies according to your needs and you can define it to different users as well now in your organization you might have people who are uh, using very sensitive information for whom the password strength should be the highest right there can be uh, people who are not using uh, you know confidential information but the password strength should also uh, be adhered uh, to the organizational standards so you can define all that separately and segregate it as well then we have the multi factor authentication now with the multi factor authentication we have the uh, zoho one auth uh, application wherein uh, you can download the zoho one auth application from play store and with that uh, you have the option of uh, enabling the uh, passwordless sign in uh, the face id you can scan in with the qr code or you can also have the otp enabled as well now uh, with the otp enabled uh, for uh, the second level of verification it would ask you to uh, uh, ask you to enter the otp which can be viewed in the application now you also have uh, devices and sessions and other information which can be viewed in the application you also have this uh, with third party uh, authenticator applications as well which is uh, supported and then uh, you also have another important multi factor authentication which is the hardware security key now ideally uh, you will enter the password first right now once you uh, either have an otp being sent or you can have uh, a face unlock in your mobile or you can enter uh, uh, the uh, qr code and scan the qr code or you can have a hardware security key now with the hardware security key uh, it is it would look something like a pen drive where wherein uh, with the hardware security key you need to have a software that is pre installed in your desktop or laptop this would be used ideally when you have uh, you know information which are very confidential in your uh, system physically wherein you will use the pen drive uh, and uh, in, and just uh, use it as uh, with the usb so that it is uh, the second level of authentication next we have the allowed ips now with the allowed ips uh, you have uh, the uh, whitelisting of ip addresses uh, which uh, you might feel uh, is not uh, authorized now you can prevent uh, the unauthorized access and this would strengthen the organization's security a great deal now there are different options where uh, you can uh, define the uh, the address range and uh, provide uh, the specific ip address as well if you want that to be uh, followed and then we have the session management now the session management is something which uh, is also something important that uh, you might have uh, faced on a regular basis wherein when you have web sessions that you are running the management of web sessions is also very important now this enables us to protect uh, the organization from different unaccounted sessions and this also increases the efficiency as well now you also can have the uh, lock period settings enabled where you can enable uh, the admin to control the lock period of uh, the session as well there are more options uh, with the session management we'll uh, look at it in the live demonstration now to access uh, the security policies in zo creator you can get into uh, the governance section now in the governance sections uh, you have uh, the uh, security policy over here and here i can just click on configure security policy so when i click on configure security policies i have two tabs one is the security policies another one is custom authentication first let's cover the security policies i'll click on getting getting started over here now once i click on get started i have the default policy already available now you won't be able to delete the default policy but you will be able to customize the default policy i can click on default policy over here and i can provide the password policy the multi factor authentication the allowed ips and the advanced settings over here or i also can add a new security policy i can add a policy and define it policy a 
and these policies can be defined to a group now a group consists of a group of users inside the organization right now i already have a production uh, department group that i have created with uh, different users who inside the organization which are in the production team now if i want to exclude users from this policy let's say i have uh, a production vice president who need not follow this policy and he might have a more uh, you know strong security policy that i would have defined right so i can exclude that person over here right now then i also have the option of having the policy priority being set now if you have multiple policies that you have defined you also can go ahead and have the policy being prioritized uh, for now i'll have it as default policy and i'll click on add over here now i have a policy that is been added right now i'll click on the policy a and here policy i have the password policy which is the first option that is available right now i'll click on the setup over here with the password policy and you can see we have four options with the strength of the password now i have an option to have the strength as strong now when i click on strong over here i have the password pol uh, password complexity options being changed right i have the minimum password length of a password which is nothing but the characters in the password now i you can go ahead and uh, view it view this or edit this and mixed password is the upper case or lower case or any uh, alphabets that you are trying to add in the password with the minimum uh, special characters is uh, the asterisk or apostrophe that you are trying to add uh, over here with the password and then you also have the numeric digits now how many digits uh, does your uh, password needs to have now these can be defined over here now strong good and fair have their own password complexity defined right if you want to have your password uh, policy being set you can click on custom and this would allow you to edit all the password complexity over here right and then you have the password age now with the password age it uh, defines uh, how long your password can be active and how often you need to change the password now you can set out the password age over here i can be 30 days uh, to uh, 120 uh, to 120 days over here and then you have the minimum password age now what is the shortest password age that would exist so that users do not keep changing the password uh, you know every uh, short period of time right so uh, you can go ahead and define that as well and then you have the option of a refusal of previously used passwords now users might tend to use the same password again uh, if they are asked to create a new password so that they remember the password well now if you want that not to happen and if you want uh, the previous passwords not to be used you can define the refusal of previously used password as well over here right now the changes that you are making over here will be reflected the next time the user goes ahead and signs out and logs into the application now once this is defined i'll click on update policy and you can see the password policy has been saved successfully then we have the multi factor authentication now with the multi factor authentication uh, you can uh, set up the multi factor authentication over here wherein uh, you have uh, different modes that are available with the uh, multi factor authentication first you have the one auth uh, mode where you can download the one auth application and you can use the uh, face id or uh, the touch id from your mobile phone to log in to the application uh, which uh, you would have done in uh, multiple uh, you know accounts or mails that you would have used earlier right and you also have an option of uh, using the allowed uh, passwordless sign in as well and you can use the otp authenticator now if uh, you have an option uh, to go ahead and want to use the otp you can go ahead and use the otp authenticator now the ub key is nothing but the hardware uh, key that we were talking about in the presentation uh, ub key is uh, is a company which uh, provides those uh, hardware keys 
if you are using those in your organization you can enable that as well and you also have an option to enable the sms based otp as well now with the sms based otp uh, you can have your uh, service carrier service provider pro, uh, have the sms sent uh, with the uh, otp now with this you would have to register your mob, uh, the users have to register their uh, mobile numbers uh, when they sign up and then you have the mfa lifetime now with the mfa uh, lifetime uh, ideally when you have a browser that you are using on a regular basis uh, if you are trusting that browser it would uh, it would ask you in a notification that are you trusting this browser and for the next uh, you know number of days you will not be asked to use the mfa which is the multi factor authentication now you can define how many days you do not want the multi factor authentication to happen now those can be defined over here and then you also have the allowed backup recovery codes now if the user has uh, forgotten uh, their uh, password or they are not able to access the multi factor authentication uh, you will uh, be able to generate uh, the user backup uh, recovery codes and you can save it so that uh, signing in becomes much easier now after uh, defining this you can click on update policy you can click on verify and here i can go ahead and verify it with my password and confirm the password now once confirmed i can update uh, the policy over here you can see the multi factor authentication has been updated successfully then we have the allowed ips now with the allowed ips uh, you can add ip addresses uh, and these are the three options that are available now you can have uh, the users restricted to the current ip address or you can add a static uh, ip address where you can define just a single ip address and that is the only ip address the users will be able to access and you also can set up a range as well from which ip address to which ip address you want the user to access their accounts from you can define that as well and at the end you have the advanced settings now with the advanced settings uh, you have the web session management first now web session management is something as i told you before is used when you are uh, having uh, different uh, sessions being opened up and to manage those sessions uh, opened by the user you can use the options available over here the first we have the session lifetime now how long uh, should the session be active and it should not be signed out now that can be defined over here it can be uh, one day five days 10 days or it just can be the default value you can define it you also have the option of having the idle session timeout defined now if the users are not signing out right and you can automatically have that application being signed out after it is inactive for uh, the number of hours that is defined over here right now so you can define the timeout as well and you also have the concurrent sessions now this will increase the efficiency of uh, the applications as well where if you have applications that are opened up right with different windows and tabs uh, you will uh, be able to choose the number of active sessions like it can be 5 sessions 10 sessions uh, depending upon uh, your requirement you can go ahead and change the concurrent sessions as well at the end we have the option of having the lock period settings now with the lock period settings uh, you can monitor uh, the period of uh, the sign in attempts that are being made right now with the time frame that is defined you can monitor the time period and the maximum number of invalid sign ins is nothing but when a user enters a password wrong how many number of uh, invalid entries can you allow right now that can be defined over here if you want uh, the passwords to be entered a maximum of 3 times you can go ahead and select 3 over here right and you also have an option of selecting the lock period now if the user has entered password wrong for the maximum number of times and the account gets locked you have uh, the lock period also Uh, defined now you can define it for 30 minutes for the next 30 minutes the user will not be able to access and he has to wait for the next 30 minutes to enter and try the new pass uh, try the uh, password again to sign in 
right now once all this is uh, defined right you can get into the policy information and these defined policies are uh, connected to the groups that you are defining right now these groups uh, have uses and these uses right now when i get into a group over here now i already have a production group that is available right now with the security policies inside the production group you can see you have another policy that is created which is policy a which we have created now so any user who is inside this group will adhere to the policies that we have set up over here right now you can set more uh, security policies and uh, for example let me just show you the security policy hierarchy as well i'll define this to another group i'll uh, click on add now here uh, let's say uh, you have uh, four to six security policies that you have defined according to different uh, groups now you can go ahead and change the priority as well over here now you can just drag and drop the priority setting by just changing uh, the uh, by clicking on the three uh, dots over here so that uh, that would allow you to drag and drop the policy uh, hierarchy as well <clears throat> it starts from the default policy now the default policy would always take precedence and then you have uh, the other security policies that are defined over here now the security policies that are being defined should always have a group attached to that policy now with this, uh, we have come to the end of our uh, security policies. Let's get into the next understanding of uh, configuring uh, custom authentications. Now custom authentications uh, helps us uh, in the process of uh, signing up to applications on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Now there are different ways by which uh, you can go ahead and uh, sign up uh, for applications. So you can have the user have password based uh, authentication you can have the user use the certificate based authentication you have token based authentications that uh, can be enabled for the user you have biometric authentication and many more authentications that are possible right now one such authentication is the single sign on authentication which uh, we will be using on a regular basis right when you have multiple applications you can use the single sign-on authentication. Now, this helps users in signing uh, multiple domains and applications uh, in a single uh, browser. Now, this enables users to go ahead once they sign in uh, with a single application. If it is connected to multiple applications, you will be able to open up those applications as well. Now, in a Zoho directory, we maintain the industry standards, SSO protocols such as SAML and uh, JSON WT, which can be configured. Now, uh, let's go ahead and look at a brief understanding about the configuring of SAML authentication. Now, let's say you have a browser wherein you enter into the browser and uh, you try to access Zoho Creator, right? Now, as soon as you try to access the Zoho Creator application, uh, you are re redirected to the service provider, which is Zoho, who generates the SAML response at the backend. Now, once that SAML response is generated, you can go ahead and it will reach the identity provider. Now, it redirects to the identity provider and the partner passes the SAML request and authenticates the user. And once it generates the SAML response, it is encoded and it is shared with the ACS uh, response. Now, ACS is nothing but a certificate which uh, is verified and then you a user can go ahead and log into the application. Now, we have covered this uh, in uh, detail in a separate session that uh, we had conducted. Let me get into the demonstration. And in the demonstration in the top, we have custom authentication. Now, with the custom authentication, we had covered a separate session uh, where uh, we had discussed in length about uh, the SAML uh, authentication that is available over here. Now, when you have uh, the uh, custom authentication and when you want to add a new IDP, you can click on add IDP in the top right corner. 
which is the identity provider. You have uh, the general information of adding the display name groups that you want to choose. And here you have two options, SAML and JSON web token, right? Now, my code trainers would be sharing the uh, documentation as well as uh, the link for uh, the session that we have done earlier, where we have discussed in detail about uh, the SAML response. Uh, here uh, with the SAML response, you'll be able to uh, enable the single sign-on protocol, right? Now, you also can use the uh, JSON web token as well, wherein uh, you just need to click, you just need to have uh, the SAML response where you can enable the single sign-on process. You need to have the ACS URL entered with the single sign-on URL and the sign-out URL. These step-by-step -step process uh, are uh, things that we have explained in the uh, previous session. You also have the JSON web token where you can enable the JSON web token uh, with uh, different uh, algorithms that you can select depending upon uh, your, uh, you know, security concerns that are there for the data that you are sharing then you can update it over here and the idp gets updated now every single time a user goes ahead and logs in uh, the saml uh, response happens right now when you sign up, sign out of uh, the account and sign in uh, it would directly enable the saml response or uh, the jwt response now let's look at some of the key pointers that you need to note while working with Zoho Directory and the changes that you are making. Now to perform uh, actions with Zoho Directory, uh, you should uh, either be a super admin or you should have given access, uh, the super admin should have given access to the admin in Zoho Directory. You also can set up custom roles as well. Now, if you are given uh, those roles, you'll be able to go ahead and define uh, the policies and uh, the controls and domains as well. Now, for any configurations that are made in Zoho directory, for it to be applicable to users in Zoho Creator, they'll have to be assigned to the Zoho Creator application from the users module. Now, over here, uh, you have uh, the users module, right? Now, every users uh, module, you click on uh, the user, uh, you have applications. So these applications, even though you have all the security policies in place and groups created, you need to have the applications selected, right? Now it can be different users with different roles. So once you define uh, the roles and workspaces for uh, BIN analytics and flow, you can go ahead and uh, define uh, the process over here. Now, when I click on the user, you have all the applications inside the platform. You click on one application and define uh, the applications uh, user and developer, and then click on apply and click on done. Now, once you assign that user, right now, application has been assigned successfully for this user over here. Only then will all the uh, security policies and changes that you are making to the controls uh, will be uh, reflected. Now with this, uh, we have uh, come to the end of uh, the session. Uh, I hope it was uh, meaningful and you have a lot of takeaways from the session. Now there are a few more upcoming sessions uh, for uh, that we have in store for you all in the coming months as well. Uh, we have uh, the learning table series, uh, which is uh, 12 months, uh, 12 industries, where every month we take an industry and uh, we go ahead and uh, develop an application from scratch for that very specific industry. And then we showcase that uh, to the uh, audience and it, you will also be sharing the uh, DS file of that application as well. Now, the next topic is on technology industry. We'll be developing an application for the technology industry on November 7th. We'll be showcasing that uh, application with a lot of uh, features that have come up uh recently uh please do go ahead if you have not already registered you can go ahead scan and register my code trainers will be sharing the link you can go ahead and share it to your peers as well now if you have already registered uh it is a recurring session so that uh next time uh you would just get a reminder to join the session now 
it's the same for the creator tectonic series as well if you have not registered please do go ahead and register for the session using the qr code uh, the next topic would be on directory stores right and device authentication where we'll talk about how you can authenticate devices and how you can use the multi-factor authentications and other applications that are being accessed through the mobile right and you will we'll also be talking about uh, device authentications and different directories that are available inside uh, the da uh, zoho directory with zoho creator and this will happen on november 14th um if you have my co-trainers would be sharing the link if you have already registered uh, please do share the link to your colleagues or uh, people who uh, might find th these uh, sessions useful as well and uh, while uh, we answer uh, your questions, we also have online trainings that are happening on uh, a regular basis. Uh, every uh, week we have online trainings for uh, business users and uh, associate developers, specifically for uh, business people and people who do not have uh, much experience with uh, coding. Uh, they can go ahead and enroll uh, to the business user sessions. We also have associate developer sessions, which if you already have experience working with Zoho Creator and also have a developer experience or would like to learn about uh, the uh, development or customizations that are involved in Zoho Creator with Deluge, you can go ahead and sign up to the associate developer training that are happening. You can scan the QR code to get uh, the online training uh, schedules that are being uh, created uh, for every week you can go ahead and join these sessions as well uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, in today's uh, tech connect uh, series uh, meet you all in another uh, session thank you